Earl Galant, Shaw Foreman here at Township Chevrolet for another edition of Tech Talk. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, check engine lights and more specifically your uh, EVAP system causing that check engine light on. Everyone's got a friend or a family member or maybe it's you that's driving around. One of your vehicles at home has that check engine light on. Uh, you've taken it somewhere and they've said, oh, don't worry about that. It's just an EVAP concern and it won't cause any drivability problems and won't cause any issues down the road. So you just kind of put up with that light there. Some people even take it a step farther and put that little piece of a black electrical tape over it. And so today I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on what the EVAP system is, uh, kind of how it functions, um, maybe some reasons why you might want to think about getting that light off on your dash and getting that repair done. So the EVAP system is there to uh, absorb or, or to take care of or deal with the fumes in the gas tank. So years and years ago, uh, before EVAP systems come around, you used to walk through a parking lot on a hot day and you can kind of see the fuel vapors rising out of the out of the gas caps or gas tank filler area on vehicles. So that system's there, so as the temperature changes and you have the fumes come off the gas tank, it stores it in uh, the part of the EVAP system called the charcoal canister. So that's basically just a little holding tank that stores those fumes until it can be burnt in the engine. And the way the system works is the kind of basics of it and pretty much all manufacturers do the same thing. When you're driving down the road and it's, meet, it's met certain conditions, so the ambient temperature outside is a certain temperature, you've got your engine at a certain temperature, you're, usually the rule of thumb is over a quarter tank or under the three quarter mark, so in, in between there. Uh, once the computer sees the, that criteria is met, then it'll open up a purge valve. The purge valve is located most of the times on the engine, and that uses the engine vacuum to draw those fumes out of the gas tank the one or, and the charcoal canister that, that's been stored there and actually burn them through the tailpipe and burn them up so they're not just escaping into the atmosphere. Uh, to do that, it also needs a vent valve in the system. The vent valve is there, you can, just like a, just like a kid drinking a juice box. If you're sucking up uh, the juice out of the juice box, the juice box tries to kind of go in on itself. So what they do is they put a vent valve on that so as it's pulling the fumes out of the tank and the charcoal canister, it's also drawing in fresh air behind it uh, so that it doesn't have that suction effect. So the main system, the main parts of the system are your computer that uh, controls the system. You've got your wiring obviously and you've got your, your, your piping that goes from the fuel tank and charcoal canister and your vent to your purge to your engine. And you've got your vent valve, your purge valve and your charcoal canister. So, um, which leads me to the next thing. The most expensive part to fix on that system is your charcoal canister. Your charcoal canister in theory will pretty much last forever or should last the life of your vehicle. What will shorten the life of your charcoal canister is if you're one of those people that are constantly, you know, getting, squeezing that extra few cents out of, out of the fuel pump and filling up your gas tank and you're going to round it up to the nearest dollar, we don't recommend that. Uh, the vent for that system for the fresh air to pull the fresh air in from your vent valve uh, is usually located around the filler neck somewhere. So what'll happen is when you're rounding the fuel up, the fuel will actually overspill before it comes out of, you know, obviously out into the ground, it'll overfill into that charcoal canister. Raw fuel will, will damage that canister and can cause all kinds of evap issues. So your best bet is no matter how close you are to that dollar amount, just let it shut off. So having said that, the charcoal canister normally is not an issue. Usually it's, um, You've got a vent valve or a purge valve issue. Rarely you can have a line that's broke or an air leak in the line somewhere that can cause that light to come on. Um, another thing is too, obviously gas caps not being tightened. If you, if you have a car that has a gas cap, you can usually read on the cap, it'll say two clicks to tighten. And that's to seat that valve in there properly uh, so that you don't end up having the light come on for a small leak in the EVAP or a medium leak or large leak uh, or an EVAP system fault code. So you want to make sure that's tight all the way. And then with a lot of the newer cars with the cap, capless fuel system, where there is no fuel cap, uh, you want to make sure if you're, you're fueling your car up and you're seeing a bunch of ice and snow around, don't just you know shove the nozzle in there and start fueling. Just clean that snow off because the flap that you're sticking the, the, um, the nozzle into, that's actually not the one that does the sealing. There's actually one further down, but when you open that up, sometimes you'll get some water or ice will fall down in there. Of course, it can melt when it gets warmer and freeze up again and hang that hang that little uh, valve open or flap open there and cause that light to come on. So um, 
It doesn't normally cause any drivability issues, anything wrong with your EVAP. That is true. Uh, the only downside of the whole deal is if you have another fault in your vehicle somewhere, an emissions related fault, you've got no idea uh, that it's happening. So uh, with your check engine light on all the time, um, you're not going to know unless there's a drivability issue. So um, it's always good to have that light off. And most of the time, it's, it's not a real difficult system to diagnose if uh, the shop you're taking it to has got the proper equipment and we have it here um, and you get the knowledge to fix it. So um, if you got that light on and you're tired of seeing that little yellow thing lit up in your dash uh, and you've been told by somebody else it's an EVAP problem, or you think it might be, uh, bring it on into us and we'll uh, put our scan tool on and give you an idea what it's going to cost to get that light out. That's been another edition of uh, Tech Talk today. Earl Galant here at Township. Uh, looking forward to do business with you. And once again, if you guys have any comments or anything you uh, have on your own car that you might want to uh, kind of a rundown on how things work or uh, any systems on a car, just drop it in the comments below in the video and we'll do our best to get that on there. Thanks again.